Okay, time to give Bandit level 29 to level 30 a go. So we have a level goal that there is a git repository at this SSH URL. Um, the password for the user Bandit 29 git is the same as for the user Bandit 29. Close the repository, clone the repository, sorry, and find the password for the next level. So this is rinse and repeat what we've been doing before, okay? Um, so let's not uh, wait around, let's just straight away go for it. I've got the uh, password for level ban for Bandit 29 here, so I'm just going to hit enter and just have that on my screen. And I'm going to make a directory in the temp folder uh, called Dean that we can work from. Okay, so now I'm in this Dean temp folder. Here we can clone the repository and uh, get looking at it and see see if we can find anything new. Uh, so let's do that with git clone. Git clone like we did before in this URL. Let's make this a bit bigger. Okay, and we're going to connect. Yep. And it wants this password, which we know from the description of the of the level is the same as for Bandit 29. So we'll pass that in. Okay, and something's happened. We've we've uh, downloaded this Git repository called Repo. So we're going to CD into it again, and ls, and we've got this README file again as we did last time. So let's have a look, see what it says with cat. Okay, bandit notes, some notes for bandit 30 of bandit, credentials, username, bandit 30, password, no passwords in production. Okay, that's not gonna um, worry us. We've, we've seen this sort of thing before, so we're gonna have a look straight away to see what other um, previous versions there were of this, of this uh, sort of repository. Uh, by using git log and we're in this one here right uh, the the sort of topmost um, commit and we can see that there was this previous commit the initial commit of readme uh, so let's go have a look at that one so we're going to do that the same as we did before with git checkout and I'm just going to put a few of these characters in and it will recognize which commit I want from that Okay, so we're now in this detached head state, which just means that we're looking at a previous sort of version. Um, and if we ls, we can still see this readme, and we can cat to read it. But okay, we've we've hit a snag because when we did this before, we looked through the uh, the different versions and we came across some information. Uh, that hasn't happened this time, so we need to learn a bit more about Git repositories um, in order to look to find where we need to look uh, to access more information, or you know, see see where we can find this password. Um, so the first thing I'm going to have to tell you about is sort of branches. Now, in a Git repository, we have we have sort of several different branches. Um, the, the main branch of our project is called is called the master branch but there can be several different branches. Um, say for instance your project you have like a you're developing some software and you have like the stable release um, version of that software. It's the, the, the version that you've distributed to everyone and it's all being maintained in some git repository. Um, but then someone says oh I can make a new feature. Um, I would like to develop this new feature and maybe we can use it. Well maybe you wouldn't want them to put that into your sort of most up-to-date released production version. So you, you could make another branch where that, that feature can be developed and then if it, if it works and you know it's developed enough and you think oh yeah I want that in my main branch you can merge them later on. Uh, so you could have several different branches and uh, you know, with all different features and all sorts of different things going on. It's one of the, the great things about Git. Um, now, so there could be another branch 
is what I'm trying to get at on this in this Git um, repository. Uh, one way we can see is by oh, using the git branch command. And so you see how it shows us the, the branches. We've got this star to say where we are. We're in the head detached state, which just means we're like away from the most up to date um, commit. But we only have this master branch. So that's not going to get us anywhere. We can, using the checkout command, come out of this head detached state and back to the sort of most up to date version by just using git checkout master. So we can check out different branches by using the checkout command. So if I do that, we switch back to this master branch. Now there's an interesting thing here. It says your branch is up to date with origin slash master. Now this reveals something about this git repository. Um, I sort of mentioned GitHub before, so you can uh, you can host um, Git repositories on like platforms like GitHub, uh, which allow multiple people to collaborate, and they can all sort of retrieve a local copy of that um, that repo and and work on it, and then push updates to the to the remote repository, and it's it's fantastic. Um, but what's the interesting thing is is that this origin is the default name given to the remote repository and what that means in this instance is that this local repository um, is is linked to a to a remote repository um, if we do git status so git status is another command just it says exactly the same thing essentially but but it's saying that what it's saying is that we are sort of at the same version as the remote repository now what's interesting about that is that there could be different branches on the remote version of this repository that we can't see. Um, now we can tell if there are using the git branch command again. And that's what we're going to do here. And so you can see now that by using this A flag, which sort of gives us all the information we could want, we've got these other, well two other, branches and they're under this remotes directory which basically just means they belong to this remote they're not being tracked locally uh, but they belong to this remote repository so there's our next step okay that this is how we have to think about it that that we've got our local repository we've looked for all the versions there's nothing there we haven't got any other branches but we can see by this origin statement that it's linked to a remote repository um, and therefore we can then see if there's any branches there and try and move on to them. Now that's really easy to do, you just use the checkout command again. Um, and so let's check this first one, this dev branch. And all we do, oh, get checkout, dev. Okay. And you see now it says branch dev set up to track remote branch dev from origin and switched to the new branch dev. What that means is it's now said it's now set up a tracking um, like a tracking sort of branch, or I can't remember the exact terminology, but it's now tracking that that remote branch, um, which means we can now access it. So if we do git status now, we should be on branch dev. Okay. Um, and we can git log and we can see now look, that there's loads more commits that we can look through um, so if I hit Q just to come out of that because there might have been more things um, so we can ls and now in our working directory we have this code directory but we also still have the readme so let's just have a look at that and bingo there's a password which is nice it means we don't have to scroll <laughs> like um, wade our way through all this uh, these extra commits and things um, but yeah there's the password so the important takeaway is that there's just these remote this idea of remote branches that aren't being tracked locally um, but we can still access them and uh, very easily just using the git 
checkout command. Um, and just like that, we found the, the password. So I hope that kind of makes sense. And um, yeah, with that, we've sort of learned a lot about navigating Git. And I shall see you in the next one.